November 4th, St. Charles Borromeo. St. Charles Borromeo, bishop and confessor, was called by God to execute a true reform in the church. The happy conclusion of the Council of Trent is in great part due to his prudence. He was appointed cardinal at age 23. He was given the archbishopric of Milan. He presided over many meetings and councils of the church. He established colleges and congregations and renewed the spirit of his clergy and the religious orders. He was also the founder of many diocesan seminaries. St. Charles Borromeo put into practice the decisions taken at the Council of Trent. He had both the natural and the supernatural gifts necessary to be a holy bishop. His sole aim was to realize the model of the perfect bishop. All his life was ordained to this ideal. In him the man disappeared, and only the prelate appeared, manifesting splendorous sanctity. St. Charles Borromeo was a true pastor who watched over his flock. He was alert to the way error was being presented at his time, and took a strong position against it. Like many other preeminent figures of the Counter-Reformation, he helped Catholic doctrine progress by developing the doctrine that Protestantism denied. In his written works, he deduced new developments from truths already known. He was not an ecumenical prelate who accepts little parts of the truth and ignores the error in order to appease a heretic. He would analyze the ensemble of the heresy he was dealing with and discern its ultimate bad intentions. Then he would refute the error in these malicious points and develop the opposite doctrine of the church. St. Charles was not only a great bishop of the Counter-Reformation, but in a certain sense he was the bishop of the Counter-Reformation. This title is his not only just because he was a very learned man, but rather because he became the very archetype of a bishop. He was not satisfied with writing books against the errors of the time, which he did, but he did even more. He personified the truths he defended in his books. He became the very symbol of what he wrote. As a cardinal, as you know, he was supposed to dress with pomp and grandeur to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ before men. In addition to being a prince of the church, St. Charles was a temporal lord in Milan, born into a great and noble Italian family. In his twenties, he was entrusted with the responsible post of papal secretary of state. Therefore, he used to dress and appear in great style. Once his carriage was on its way to one of his appointments, when a simple friar who was walking on the road approached it. St. Charles ordered the driver to stop the vehicle. The friar greeted him and said, Your eminence, how nice it must be to live the life of a cardinal, to wear such splendid clothes and travel in a magnificent carriage. Surely it is much more agreeable than to be a simple friar like me and walk by foot. Cardinal Borromeo kindly invited the friar to accompany him. The friar seated himself next to the cardinal, and the journey recommenced. Shortly, the friar began to cry out in pain, because the beautiful cushions of the benches were placed over a board of sharp iron nails of penance that the cardinal normally used to mortify himself. The pain became more acute with every movement of the vehicle. The friar could not support such mortification and begged the carriage stop for him so he could get out and continue his travel by foot. The silks and crystals of the luxurious carriage were meant to be seen by the people to glorify God and the dignity of his post. Underneath the splendid appearance of a cardinal, the saint continued to practice penance for his sins and those of his flock. We can ask St. Charles Borromeo to intercede with our Lord and Our Lady for several things on this feast day. For the reform of today's bishops, who are so often very different from the model he represented. For the restoration of the seminaries, some so immersed in bad morals and even false doctrine. And finally, for the restoration of the entire Holy Catholic Church today, as he helped restore her in his times. For ourselves personally, we might ask him to give us vigilance against heresy and his heroic sense of sacrifice.